When you enter a space, do you leave it better than when you first entered? That's a really important question for me. It's something that I really try to do. Can't say that I've always been 100%, but do I enter spaces and actually, you know, make people feel more valued? Do I help them, you know, in their work? And the reason I asked this question is because the podcast that I did today with Livia Chan, she's the embodiment of this. I've watched her grow, uh, enter spaces and really not only push her own ideas and really share things that could make any teacher better, but she uplifts other people. And it's something that when you think about, you know, in your face-to-face interactions, when you look at the staff rooms we enter as educators, but you also look at the online spaces, do we actually enter these spaces and elevate people to do better things? And in this conversation, Livia ta- talks about her journey as both a teacher, an assistant principal, but really how she's found a lot of people that she's connected with through personal learning networks and finding those spaces and how she's been so valued in her work and so uplifted by others. And I can just, I just love watching her talk about the things that she's done, which has uplifted people like myself and so many educators across the world. It's a really great conversation. Livia is a, a, a very awesome educator from Canada, from the uh, province of BC. And after this, you might want to move there after you listen to the full podcast. I love talking to her. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, everyone. I am really pumped to be able to have Livia Chan join me today. And uh, Livia is someone actually I have connected with through social media. I, I honestly, and I'm having this, I don't know if I'm just getting old and I can't remember things. I don't know if we've ever met. In, have we met in person ever? Well, sort of. You came to our district to, uh, for a keynote uh, at, at our district Pro D many, many years ago. Um, did you so- listen to anything I said at that time or did it take you a while? <laughs> so like was it was like I don't care what that guy says and now it's like oh, okay maybe you got some good stuff right no you you were the one that told me or told me told everyone that we need to start blogging and so it's always sat on my heart I want to start blogging like professionally for myself I had classroom blogs but that's a little bit different right and so yeah. when I finally did this uh, last year and then I reached out to you to let you know like hey I finally started blogging that's when we that, oh yeah, yeah. Because I I remember because I started I actually have your blog and my I use a uh, Eno reader so actually yeah. so anytime you post like I'm watching right and so like it's actually been really cool kind of seeing I I know you do a lot of stuff you you work um you're 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 actually basically assistant principal head teacher is what it's called in your district uh you also teach so like you're you're actually doing both roles you are doing a ton of work on social media and this is like I'm really excited to talk to you and just hear about some of the learning that you're doing, some of the connections that you've made and just kind of seeing um, your progression in the work that you're doing and some of the things that are, 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 are coming your way. So Livia, can you just share with people kind of like your journey in education so people get to know you like, you know, you're, you're an administrator, teacher, where did you start in education? What's some of the things that influenced you to kind of do the work that you're doing today? Well, I originally thought I wanted to be a police officer. So I did my undergrad in criminology and then, you know, things just didn't work out. And also, you know, I'm Chinese, if you haven't noticed, and Chinese parents don't really like their, their daughters to go into policing. You can imagine why. Um, and I have a lot of friends that are in teaching, like a lot of my really good friends um, from my childhood. And I think I was always kind of drawn to it. I've also had people tell me, hey, you'd be a really good teacher. So I, I do listen to a lot of the messages that I hear from other people. And so I thought, well, I don't want to just go into teaching because it's just what my friends do. So mm-hmm. I started working part time and volunteering two days a week in a school. And as soon as I started doing that, I fell in love with working with children. And I never looked back and I you know, thought, this is what I want to do. And so I st- when I started teaching, I taught grade two, three for about seven years or so. And then went on to our staff development team in learning technologies for about six years. And then in the last three years, I've taught grade one to five in three different schools. And then so this year is my first year as a head teacher. So how's that? So how's that transition been for you to move to to actually teaching? Are you are you head teacher in the same school that you were last year or is it a different school? Different school. I've been in three different schools in the last three years. 
Yeah. And so, yeah. Cause like what's interesting too, is that sometimes it's easier to leave a school, you know, and become an administrator than be in your own school. Cause you'll get the, like, Oh, you're joining the dark side, that kind of thing. Right. Like, Oh, you, you know, there, there's some of that that's happened in education. I've seen it. I've, to be honest, you probably said it to some of my friends that were teachers that became administrators and it's totally like, I'm not a big fan of it. I shouldn't have said it when I, when I did, but like, how has that transition been moving from, you know, teacher to, you know, administrator slash teacher. And I know that, I know that your, I think your, your, your time commitment is actually more for a teacher than it is for admin on contract, but you're still an administrator, right? So like, how has, been, how has that transition been for you in this last year? Because I know a lot of people listening to this are mm-hmm. people that actually want to go into admin at some point. Right. It's, it's been a very uh, interesting transition. You know, you, on top of it, you have COVID, right? So mm-hmm. all, the, all the different pieces to that. Uh, but, you know, one thing that I really enjoy is our school is three floors and the office is on the, the, the main middle floor. And there's something about the walking up the stairs into my classroom and almost like taking off that hat and then putting on my my teacher hat. And similarly, the opposite, right? Because I have Tuesday, Wednesday mornings and Thursday afternoons as my admin time. And so, you know, half the days during the middle of the week. So it's that kind of like shedding of, okay, here's my old role off, new role on. And I almost feel like I have more energy because it's, it's fresh, right? Halfway through yeah. the day, I'm, I'm fresh. And you know, I love teaching kids so much that I get fueled by that. So it's like, oh, I miss my kids in the mornings. So I, I walk in with, it's almost like a, a brand new day for me, right? Like I almost get two new days in one day. Um, and then, you know, obviously it's that time that I'm away from them. I, I, I miss them and I feel like I don't have as much time to do all the great things that I want to do with them, all the fun things. But you know, it's, it's been, uh, you know, because I was part of staff development, I was like a district leader. So it's not this leadership kind of formal leadership has, is not completely new to me because mm-hmm. in my previous role, I would work with, I had 27 schools. So I worked with, with different principals in trying to help move their staff forward in terms of integrating more technology with curriculum. So now I get to, you know, kind of, get into different classrooms. I work with the kindergarten kids and the other kids and doing green screen and things like that. So within our, my own school. Uh, and then it's been such a phenomenal experience to work so closely with my administrator. She is incredible. I am truly blessed to be paired with her. Her name's Maria. And, you know, we work so well as a team and you know, to be able to bounce off ideas and to me, this, I'm like her student teacher, right? In terms of, right? I'm learning how to become an administrator one day. And I feel like a sponge. I watch everything that she does and and just really want to learn everything that I can uh, in this time that I have with her. Well, and that, that actually like really matters um, who, when you're assistant principal going in principal role, because there there is, um, there, there's some sometimes, and I've seen this. And to be honest, with you, I have these conversations with, you know, administrators who pull me aside, confide in me because I'm not, you know, part of, it, like I'm, I'm, I'm just a guy that works on my own now, right? And yeah, so they, right. yeah, they kind of talk to me about this. And some of the things that happen is like, hey, like I'm the principal, you're this, these are your roles, and it's kind of like anything that they do that is positive is almost the, the principal sometimes threatened by it. Right. And where I was really blessed, I had a really um, awesome, uh, principal as my, my first couple of years as assistant principal, his name is Archie Lilico. And same thing. He, he saw it as like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you all the things about being a principal. We're going to go through this. Now I am the final say, right. Cause it's like, nobody gets mad at the prince, the assistant principal. If things screw up in the school, they come after me. Right. right? And so that, that was like, uh, it was really, that mentorship really mattered. And I think to me, having the opportunity to work with a really great principal when you're assistant principal teaches you a ton and, and, and really connects. And there, there's something I want to ask you about, and it's maybe because of my own insecurity about this, but this is part of what I had to do because I, I did something, 
uh, similar to you when I first became an assistant principal, and we, we know you're, it's called head t- teacher in uh, Burnaby, um, and I, I was still teaching. And this is one of the things I had to deal with is that I felt I always put the, the whole of the school above my classroom. And I, and I don't know if that makes, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but just for people listening is that, you know, uh, I actually did all the student discipline, right. And I don't know if that's the terminology, but just for, you know, lack of a better term right now, people understand, you know, if someone kid got in trouble or something like that. And so my, my class, I would say like, Hey, I got, I got a jet, I got to deal with something here. And they knew this, like this, they were stuck with the assistant principal. And I always felt that I felt that guilt, but I was like, I, cause you're kind of being pulled. Right. And that's one of the challenges Do you, like, have, and I, I'm assuming based on, you know, your reaction to this, that this is not, it's not just a George thing. This is kind of, you feel that too. Like, is, is that something that you, you deal with in your work or is it like nobody bothers you ever when you're teaching because that's your te- Cause you're really, you're not like as much as we pretend that it's like the totally separated. It's not, you're, yeah. you, you're that person that they need to go to. And sometimes, you know, people will not like, it doesn't matter if you're teaching right now. They, I need you. I need the, the head teacher at this time. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I think it's when it is my teaching time, uh, a lot of people really, truly respect that. And I haven't so far been really pulled away from my classroom. Um, There were a couple of days that my principal wasn't there. So I wasn't, you know, I I was fully in the office for those days. So that's when I did feel a little bit like, oh, I miss my kids because I'm not in the classroom all day. Right. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, and I think because I also have a technology background that people come to me because of the technology, not necessarily because I'm a teacher, right. but a lot of times when things do come up, the the principal does take care of it. So I, I am, you know, things do come up, but yeah. for the most part, I am able to teach when it is my teaching time. But yes, things do come up, right? If yeah, the that was... Business was not available and. Yeah, no, that was all like, that was always a struggle. And, you know, I, and like, you feel, you, you don't ever want to say to a staff member that's dealing with a, a crisis, like, I can't help you now because I'm teaching, right? Like you're, you, you, you know, you have some uh, things that you can do that maybe they can't, and then you can, you want to help them out. And like, I, like I can, it's weird because I really remember that class. Uh, more than some like those students in that class be, because they were like just really understanding like hey this is just what Mr. Cr-. they were so awesome they were such a good group of kids that I that I worked with and you know I still see a lot of them and, and their connection and and kind of how they're they're tackling this and, and there's there's another part of your role and I'm curious about what you're going to say about this is that so you worked you worked at central office doing like tech integration stuff is that correct like yes. something like that. So, okay, now, but now you're assistant principal, but you have this background with tech integration. Do you find that people on your staff are more willing to try things with technology when they're working with you than when maybe you were outside working with other schools in the role where it was just basically, cause you're not just technology integration. It's just one of your skill sets, but they, the other role is more of that. Do you find that being an administrator that has that skill set, you're more likely to get people to try different things than if you were working at central office? Hmm. Well, I think not necessarily because I think, um, part of it is building the relationships with teachers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which is what we did when we were part of staff development anyway. Um, and the school that I'm at was not one of the schools that I was responsible for at the time, but, uh, you know, I think it's, it's trying to get people to really see what, what's possible. And so it's just through the conversations. I wouldn't say that they, it is that much different. I think people that kind of gravitate to, uh, integrating a little bit more technology, um, tend to just want to learn more. And right. then the other ones, it's just kind of like, you know, kind of saying, hey, we did this in our class. I think you can try this in your class. And so I work with a kindergarten class and we've done the, the green screen, use the green screen app. And 
you know, it's been incredible because you know you teach the teacher a little bit, and then they just they just get are ready to fly, right? And mm-hmm. and then they're they're ready to do more. So, I think it's I'm not sure if uh, I've answered your question properly, but. Well, yeah, and I, like I have like it's interesting because we have a lot of cross like we have a lot of similarities in our mm-hmm. career journey because I was I was doing tech integration at a, at the school level, mm-hmm. um, and then I went to become an assistant principal, and then I had that background in technology integration. And the reason like I asked this question, and this might I, this honestly might make me sound bad, but I'm I've always been honest about this stuff, is that I I tend I I tend I had more struggles with my staff when on the organizational hierarchy i was on the same level and trying to like it was like way more pushback but when i was an administrator with that people just seemed to like do it more and i don't know if i really changed my approach and like i i you know like i i i think i was you know approachable easygoing when i was at the school level and i i've really thought about this like i really thought about why this matters because we always talk about like distributed leadership and all this other stuff. And that's great. And I think that's really important. I think we have to, you know, develop leadership in our schools, but when, when you are like, like an administrator and you actually have some authority, does that actually matter with the integration? And I think like if you're a bad administrator, you're going to have hard times, but I think it's a lot easier because first of all, Hey, my, my boss, you know, and people don't like that term, but it's the truth. You, you kind of, the, you're the boss, right? Or like the assistant boss is asking me to do this stuff. And I like, so I try to think about it from my perspective. If my boss asked me to do stuff, I want to make sure my boss is happy. And maybe that's how I grew up. That's maybe, you know, kind of working, you know, my boss is the same. We talked about this, you know, my, my boss was my parents. I grew up in a restaurant uh, doing these things. And so I, I just like, I always kind of struggle with this because like we talk about this, but it does matter. Like if it, like I found that when the, our superintendent started embracing technology and I was working at central office level, it was way easier to, to get other people to embrace technology. Cause they're like, well, if the superintendent's doing it, I don't want to like, do you know what I mean? I think that it like, there's, I guess it's part of modeling, but I think there is kind of some, like as much as we pretend that's not a thing, it is, it is, it is. I think it matters that, you know, cause I, I think, it, and that would not just be with technology integration. It'd be with any initiative, right? If you are an administrator and you're talking about, uh, you know, really empowering kids, but then you, you actually, um, you know, don't model that with your staff, then it doesn't look right. But if you do it with your staff, then, you know, people, I, I don't know. And maybe, maybe I'm just like totally off. Maybe that's just like an old school, hierarchy thing right because i know we like to talk like hey everything's about distributed leadership and you know, like empowering people but it does matter when my boss does something i i don't know am i nuts here am I, like i feel like i've, I've done something wrong by saying it was all bad. <laughs> no and you know part of it is, is i i feel like i'm still very new to this role mm-hmm. yeah. so i haven't seen that the i haven't had that time to see the patterns quite yet you know what i mean and yeah, with this and I, of year, you know, like we're not really supposed to go into all these sorts of classrooms to. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And probably, you know, <laughs> to be honest with you, I could probably talk about this a little bit easier because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not admit anymore. Right. <laughs> so like, yeah. So now like, I'm not, maybe I should have asked you that question, but yeah, it's just like, you know, people embrace these things. And I think there is a reality if you're, if the people, you know, that, are kind of like hiring teachers and stuff like that. It's, it, it is something that does actually matter. And so w- when you're, when you're, when you're going through like teaching, uh, does your, like, so when you're teaching, how does that work with your principal? Like, what, do you get evaluated as a teacher and an administrator? Or how is that working? Well, or do you in, evaluate yourself, which would be the best? Well, in <laughs> BC, great job in, myself. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, in, in BC, we're not evaluated as teachers. We don't oh, have right. Do they do that in Alberta? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like they don't do they don't do it like every year, and you know. But you're evaluated at some point, right? And I don't know, yeah. like, really, not in BC. Yeah. Mm. That's it. Well, okay. That's it. That's an interesting. 
Well, how, what do they do? Like, there's got to be some, like, they just, whatever. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's, that's it's interesting. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Yeah. And like BC, BC is like a pretty progressive, um, uh, progressive like province. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with their, like, they had a whole big curriculum redesign, uh, probably about what, five, six years ago or something yeah. like that. Five, six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so like when, so when you're looking at the, um, so when you're looking I talk obviously a lot about innovation and there's a, so a lot of stuff that I've seen with innovation, what I talk about is really, did you see that connection with the, like with the curriculum in BC or like, how does that, like what, what, like when they did the redesign, what was that, what was that focused on? What changed in, in BC? Well, the, it's more kind of pulling back and looking at big ideas. That's, mm-hmm. That was one change. And then the other change was a focus on core competencies. So things like critical thinking, uh, creative thinking, uh, per- personal social awareness, uh, reflection, um, and th- those kinds of things. That That's mm-hmm. something that we w- really want to focus the kids on and, and the self-assessment of these core competencies. So there's moving and moving away from you have to teach all of these learning outcomes to here are some learning outcomes. There is some flexibility. You don't have to cover it all. Obviously for math, you kind of would like to because you want to prepare them for the next grade. But you know, if you want to go deeper, that's okay. And and skip a part of your other curriculum, that is okay because you're doing that deeper, richer um, learning rather than surface level. Okay, I'm going to cover everything and I've covered all the learning outcomes, but you know, there isn't any depth to that. So that's, that's been a, a, a good change. And then we've moved also to proficiency skills. So right now, uh, by the end of this year, all Burnaby schools from K to 7 will not have any letter grades. So oh. that's pretty exciting. K7. K7, yeah. Okay, so like for all the teachers out there listening, if you want to move to BC, you can go deeper in your curriculum. They got rid of grades, and you won't even be evaluated. Some are going to be <laughs> It's like, this is like a commercial for, you know, to move to BC right away. So, and you know, you're, you know, a lot of places are right on the ocean, which is uh, yeah. always, always a benefit. You have hey, the water so, on the mountains. Yeah. It's, on it's a, a pretty, pretty beautiful, pretty beautiful place. Um, and it, like a lot of times when I go to, and I, you know, Burnaby is like obviously a suburb of Vancouver. Right. And uh, yeah. like, if I go to the United States, it's like, ah, it's like, I've been to Vancouver. It's like Vancouver, Toronto. Right. It's like right. usually... Yeah. And people that um, people I've connected with all over the world just, just love you know that area. So if you want to move to BC, these are all the things that are happening there right now. And that that, that notion of like really being able to go deep into mm-hmm. curriculum, I think, is a dream, right? And I and I know this is not in Burnaby, so I don't want to like put you on the spot here, but it, just overall, have you ever seen have you seen any pushback from? like that to that curriculum about the opportunity to go deep. Like, is there it, like, cause you, you would just assume, no, it's not, but, but really when it, we change anything, there's always a little push, like a, a challenge to it. Like, have you seen pushback to that curriculum at all or no? And it doesn't matter. You can say whatever you want. Cause you're not even evaluated. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, pushback in terms of, I think it's just something new. So people were, right. were, you know, what is this and trying to dive into it. And, you know, we have a pretty uh, large staff development team. And for the last five, six years, that's been the push is to try to teach teachers how to, you know, what is this new curriculum uh, and how do we, how do we make it fit with what we used to know, understand of our, our curriculum. And so th- there's been a lot of work around it. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't say there's the, the same right. pushback or anything that's like a big movement towards like, no, no, we should get rid of this or anything like that. Um, there's been a lot of work to educate us on it. And so, and, and, and flexibility. So it's not like, here's a new curriculum, you have to adopt it tomorrow, right? There has been a grace period for us to grow into it. And so that's, and we've been given extra days to, to dive into the new curriculum as well. So. I think the plan was a, a good one in terms of just like here's mm-hmm. here's some time to grow into it by this year 
you know, these grades should be on the new curriculum. And it takes time to build a curriculum too, right? So it wasn't like everything was available all at once. Um, and, you know, I think there's, I love how students are encouraged to do a lot more reflection work. Right? Mm -hmm. learning about themselves and well, who are they as a learner and you know recognizing their strengths recognizing where they need to grow and then learning how to celebrate themselves right I mean yeah, I think about it, when I was a child it's so different I, I don't remember celebrating my my learning I don't remember doing any reflection mm -hmm. Do you no it was just like move it's like do the test, move on to the next thing, right? Like, and I think sometimes we we mix up like taking a test with reflection, right? Where it's actually, it, like there's a real big difference between like regurgitating someone else's ideas as opposed to making connection to those ideas through your own personal experiences, what you know, what you wanna learn. I think that, yeah. that to me is, you know, that's not like sharing ideas, your ideas back with you or, you know, curriculums, ideas back with you is not reflection. That's regurgitation. And I think, you know, we sometimes get those things mixed up, but I, th I think, you know, listening to you, um, you know, like you, you always wonder, cause, cause I, I remember the, that it was like a big, um, it was like a, a big deal when the, like, I actually so much so that I don't even live in the province and I heard about it, you know, like hearing about that. And when you talked about this is that the keys are like, there is flexibility, right? And, you know, people had that and, you know, people want to, cause I think a lot of times it's like, Hey, we have this vision of where we want to go, but people can go there to in different ways. Like if I tell you exactly, like if I want you, if I'm saying we want kids to be creative, but you must follow this linear pathway to that, it doesn't really make sense. But then the other, the other element of it too, is really that support. And I remember actually saying something to, I can't remember where this was, but it was like to a group. And one of the teachers said to me, look, Hey, teachers aren't scared of change. They're scared of doing things that will actually have no benefit for kids and wasting their time on that. So if they know that it's going to actually make an impact on kids, they're willing to do this. Right. And I think that there's a, there's a lot of things that in education, I, I think are myths and we just have to redirect them because they're just easy ways to like blame. Oh, teachers hate change. No, maybe you're just bad at getting people to see a better way. Like maybe it's, maybe it's like an admin issue, right? Like, I, I think that's part of it too, is like, so, so if they don't embrace change, then are you just going to blame them? Or are you going to think about a different approach to get people to understand that? And so having like that flexibility and support, um, people knowing they're backed up, like they can make some mistakes along the way. They could try some different things. They can, you know, do the things that we talked about, reflect on their practice, be creative in this. So that I really appreciate that you said that because um, a lot of times when people implement change, they don't do those things. It's like, Hey, we're all doing this and you do it. And if you do it wrong, you're gonna be in trouble. Like that's how people feel. Yeah. Right. No, so. And that's, and that's what I, I love about this is that we, you feel like you have the grace to try to still figure things out. And you know, another right. piece that I need to mention too, is that there's a big, um, you know, honoring of indigenous education throughout our whole curriculum. So through math, through science, through social studies, all language arts. And that's an important piece that I didn't mention earlier. And, and you know, so, so that's, been, that's been a challenge for many of us because we don't have that background, right? Mm -hmm. We do have some uh, helping teachers on our staff development that are uh, part of our indigenous education team. Um, mm -hmm. And so it, it's, you know, just, learning to find the resources and, and gather them and then how do we and there's a fear right of how do i if i don't understand or don't know um, all the things how am i going to honestly and authentically teach this to students right well we can't let that stop us right because you know it's, it's kind of like you figure it out together right yeah. and and just start because that needs to happen we need to begin to or and carry on with the the honoring of you know us being on unceded territories and, and all that mm -hmm. so you know that's been that's been a, a a great part to our newly revised curriculum too yeah and it's like you said like people are going to be w way more willing to try different things you know do things they struggle with as long as they know they're supported and i think yeah. that to me is a really big aspect 
uh, of what they do. And so like when we were talking earlier, uh, we did a three questions podcast. You, you basically had talked about people that influenced you, uh, people that you worked with that, you know, um, your, your administrators, you mentioned your own principal right now, and you have really flourished because you've had that support. And I know a lot of times, like I, I, sometimes like I remember actually having a conversation years ago with somebody and this is when I was a principal and they basically said like, we don't, schools don't need principals. Right. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And we talked, I mean, I have a good friendship with this guy. And really when I talked to him, it, I'm like, I, this is a you thing right now. You're, you don't like your principal. So you think all principals are bad, but I looked at, you know, when I had a principal who totally changed my career, totally made an impact. Then I see the value of that too. Right. And I think a lot of times it's like, Oh, nobody needs this. Cause I'm having a bad situation right now. And and I think that they can make a huge difference in, in the way that they connect. And like when I'm seeing and, and listening to your story about how you flourish, you, you've you actually had that, right? And I think sometimes we don't realize um, how important that is until we actually get people like that in our lives that do help us, you know, feel that value. I'm, I'm a big believer that, hey, we got to believe in ourselves, but it's way easier when we have someone that believes in us first, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. And so, so like kind of taking that and your role of what you do in, in like your current role, you've also started doing a lot of stuff outside of your school, right? Mm -hmm. Um, with your blog, you've been on podcasts, you're actually one of the contributors of, uh, the book that we're publishing together, which is titled kind of because of a teacher, but I don't know if that's, we haven't decided that yet but it's a contribute. It's like a chicken soup type book. So like, how did you kind of, how did you get into that? Like, how did you get into that? Cause I know a lot of people, and, and you mentioned earlier and we didn't say this on the podcast, but you kind of like were a lurker, right? Which only on social media is that okay to do. If you were a lurker in real life, that'd be kind of weird, right? Social <laughs> media, it's just normal. Um, right. But like, kind of like, how did you get into the stuff that you're doing outside of your school, but still involved with education? Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of people start off as a lurker, right? Because you're just trying yeah. to figure it out. Like, I didn't even know what a Twitter chat was. And all of a sudden, you see these hashtags, whatever the Twitter chat is. So it really started with, um, you know, I mentioned in the other podcasts, it was uh, Janet Chow who told me about Twitter. And so mm -hmm. I joined and I looked around. And then, yeah, I started tweeting a little bit more. And uh, I'm part of the Teach Better team. And the COO, Jeff Gargis, reached out and said, hey, I'd like you to be a guest on our podcast. And so I thought, like, I didn't even know what the Teach Better team was all about okay. then. So I dove into the website, looked around, I thought, wow, they've got podcasts, they've got blogs, they've got speakers network, there's a lot of things going on in this team. And then, uh, and, you know, there, there's a little part of me too that I thought, well, who am I? I'm, you know, just a, a teacher. Um, but, you know, I think it was just through the connections and then joining the team as an ambassador uh, and then just meeting other educators outside of my district and seeing all the amazing things that they were doing. And just the more I met people, the more I wanted to meet more people. And so with the pandemic, I was, I had more time. So I was joining Twitter chats, probably uh, one or two some days uh, over throughout, throughout the week. And so I just got to meet more and more people and I'm somebody who likes to reach out to people. So because I, I feel so blessed to have so many opportunities and I, I, I see people as gifts to me, right? Relationships mm -hmm. are gifts to me, you know, students are gifts to me. The day is a gift to me. And so when, when I, when I have interactions with people I want to reach out and so a lot of times I reach out to people and say hey I listen to your podcast and this is what resonated with me so and thank you for sharing thank you for amplifying people's voices and through that I just met more and more people uh, Teach Better also has an admin mastermind so I've been part of that for the last few months uh, every 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 Tuesday and met an, a lot of new people and uh, you know it just okay. It's like the more you have of something, the more you want of it because it it fills my soul, it fills mm -hmm. my brain, and even being a new head teacher, 
I feel like I am more equipped in a sense because I've listened to all the stories of all these other administrators who have had different issues brought up. And it's almost like, it's almost like we, we come to our admin mastermind group and somebody shares an issue and then everybody just kind of wraps their arms around them and say, well, here's what you right. can try or right. here's what you can try. And then you just go back and, and you know, you, you try it and it's through listening to their stories and their advice that I feel like I've learned so much from all those conversations. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I have, I, it was interesting because just the other day I was having a conversation with her two custodians and one of them was saying, you know, oh, it's so hard on Zoom. You just can't have connections, you know, that way. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, but I actually disagree with you. Because in the last few months, I have made so, like, I have so many phenomenal friends and such deep relationships with people that I've never met. And these are, like, real deep relationships that are, are even closer than the, the relationships that I have with people on staff, right? Um, you know, we've had, we've had deaths, miscarriages, all, all these things. And I feel like because we're part of this connected community, we are supporting each other especially through the pandemic, right? There's so many times that people are struggling with things, um, you know, uh, emotional and mental health. And we just kind of wrap our arms around each other and support each other. And I, I think it's, you know, all in a lot of my circles, we feel the same way that when we became a connected educator, it changed our lives. And we have now so many more people we can lean on. You know, we, we can reach people through DM on Twitter or through Voxer or, you know, Facebook Messenger, or there's just so many opportunities for us to learn from each other and to lean on each other. And, you know, I'll say it, I, I say it often, but uh, a year ago, I, I didn't even really know what a PLN was. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I do, and I'm like so connected to the Teach Better family and, and all that, like, I do not even want to live without one now, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, my bucket list is I want to meet air, all of these people yeah. that is like top of my bucket list forget we're going not, we're not even we're not even allowed out of canada right now so <laughs> and they're not allowed in either <laughs> exactly yeah. no well so actually when you were saying this like one of the questions and you answered it before i asked it is really how has this made you a better teacher and really kind of having that experience and i like i actually i think i wrote a post years ago and it was called like learning accelerated and when i it's interesting because like there's so many parallels to the work that we've done and like where, you know, certain things are occur because when I first became a principal, uh, you know, obviously new to the job, there's people who, who had been principals in my district 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know if I had a really good relationship with them. And honestly, I don't know if our philosophy was the same, like how I saw what education could be versus what they did. And I'm not saying I was right or they were wrong or anything like that. Um, but just, you know, different, I, I kind of wanted to like, really, I think a lot of times people get mixed up that, that I'm all about tech. I'm just really about learning and technology forces you to be a learner because like today, when I started this podcast, um, I'm using this Riverside FM and I've used it a couple of times. I haven't done a podcast in about a week to recorded one and all the buttons are different. And so I'm like, okay, I got to figure out the buttons, right? So like the thing is it forces you to learn all the time because everything changes all the time, right? right. There's new things coming in too. Yeah. yeah. And so when I started connecting, uh, so I started connecting on Twitter and it's funny that you say, like, I, you, like you really didn't know what you're doing. My first tweet is like, where are you, Alec? Like my brother, like I just tweeted because, you know, if I tweet, where are you, Alec? He's going to see that somehow. And uh, of course he did. And now they bug me about it all the time. And I leave it up. I think it's funny that like, obviously I, I think a lot of people know me as comfortable with this stuff. And I kind of like that. It, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, I didn't know what I was doing either. So, um, that's a progression, but I had access to other principles and conversations. And it's like, as I'm thinking about this, uh, really, there's this really kind of, and I, I don't know how I can explain this well, but there's like this massive network of educators, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's great. And I think it's really cool. You have access to that. But what I found is that you start making these smaller circles and connected a, of these certain people. Like, yeah, of course I love learning from kindergarten teachers and it was awesome to be able to connect my kindergarten teachers with kindergarten teachers. 
but I want to connect with these administrators because they kind of have a different understanding of this work. And so a lot of those people I first connected with, I still connect with, but you know, not on Twitter on, you know, I text them. Some of them don't even use Twitter, you know, some of them don't even use that anymore, but like we formed really strong relationships. And I think that looking over the last year, a lot of people have pushed back to what I share on technology because they're, because they see kids on their phones or key kids doing like mindless stuff on technology. And I've never been advocating for that. I've been advocating for how do we utilize this to connect with people and build relationships? Because at that time I didn't feel like it's and I think about this from the perspective of a kid at that time when I was an administrator, I didn't feel that I had the connections in my own district. And so I, that maybe, you know, like I got along with people, I just, maybe we had different philosophies. And I want to say like, am I crazy or is there other people doing this stuff? And so I built those connections. And then I think about kids who maybe live in a small community, like the one I grew up in and maybe don't feel connected in their own community and they're not, but they're not limited to that anymore. They can connect, you know, a lot of kids make really great friends. Like it, the, the, the one analogy that I always think about is uh, like, uh, did you ever go to like to a camp when you were a kid? Did you ever go to, is that like, is that a BC thing? Did you go like went, to like, you know? I went to church camp once. Yeah. I, I actually went to church camp too. Right. And you go there when you're a kid and these are like, Oh, we're like best friends yeah. and like, let's stay in touch forever. And then you write two letters and then you never talk to that person. You couldn't even remember their name now. Right. And now basically we have like forever summer camp, right? Like you can go to a conference, connect with people, and then you stay in touch with them forever. Or or you actually connect with them before. And as you said, like, I'm going to go meet them, right? And like, it's kind of like, it's just like summer camp is so different than, you know, um, like my daughter, four and a half, her best friend, who's four, they they connect still. They she They just moved. And that was like, that, when that was a kid, that was like, well, oh, that's the last I'll see yeah. of that person ever in my life, right? I don't, I don't know if any of that, what you think of any of that I just shared. Like, if you're seeing those connections for yourself. Well, I think that's the most incredible part is because, you know, I mean, I didn't even know what Zoom was before the pandemic. Right. But I know, I mean, it's been around for a while. And it's just the ease of connecting. Like, I recently connected with somebody. I was part of a Twitter chat on Tuesday. And I was tweeting some things and then um, the, the one of the people on there said, hey, it sounds like, you know, we it would be great if we met. And so I met with him today. We talked for an hour and, you know, he's yeah. he lives in Surrey and he's, you know, he, uh, do you know Tom, Tom Schimmer? Oh, yeah, yeah. All about, yeah. All about assessment. And I'm like, you know, it's just that easy. Set up a yeah. Zoom link. Somebody else reached out today. Oh, you know, I'd like to connect uh, within a minute. I've got a Zoom link, right? And so it's just that much easier to stay connected and to be able to, to develop these relationships really quickly too, right? Totally, think, yeah. You know, it, it's just, it, I just am so grateful to have this kind of technology. And I, you know, you were talking about your, your daughter and my son's 19. He has his gaming community, right? Mm -hmm. There's these people that he's never met, but the, the kind of, you know, because they're playing games together, I hear the way that he talks to people. And it's like, well, I'm actually really proud of how he speaks to his teammates on these games. And right. the encouragement that I hear him say, um, you know, I can't hear what the other kids are saying, but he'll share with me some, some of the things that he does. And, you know, that's his community. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will, will kind of say poor, poor things about, kids that are gaming and whatnot, but those are their friends and these are yeah. real relationships. I've had a, a, a friend before where his son actually flew down to the States to meet this other person that they met online um, playing games. And it was such a great experience for him because these are true relationships, even though they're built, you know, yep. through, through a screen, right? Well, it, so it's actually weird that you're saying this because like, I, I've like, I've been kind of been made fun of by a couple of people because I like have my Instagram and I'll like post education stuff. 
mm-hmm. but like I'm obsessed with basketball shoes, right? And so like I've been posting basketball shoes and I've been like in this basketball shoe community, all these people that like love Air Jordans and things like that. I'm actually wearing a pair of awesome Air Jordans right now. And so I just started this and it's really fascinating to me. And um, just kind of like seeing what people are sharing and, and just people like kind of, they, like people cheering people on when they get like a certain really hard to get shoe and right. and and um so yesterday this this um some, someone went to because they're like these shoes are really hard to get and someone got a pair of <laughs> they're called band air jordan ones so they're like a band color so there's something they weren't allowed in the like when jordan played in the nba right. And he, he just went to the store cause he was trying to get another shoe. And then he's like, oh, here's some like cool shoes. I'm going to buy them even though they're not my size. And I'm gonna see if anyone in the community wants them. And then, right. then they can pay me and they'll pay retail. Right. So he said, I've got these size 13 Jordans and I'm like, I'll, I'll take them. And he's like, all right. And he's like, DM me and basically sent me a message. And he said, Hey, here's what I paid. Here's how much it's going to cost. And he just shipped them to me today. And it's just like crazy. And I've never met this person. Right. Uh, and it's just interesting, right? Cause we have like this shared community. So like I have like, I got my education community. I got my like basketball shoe community. Uh, and you know, so shout out, shout out to like the soul savvy group, which is kind of cool. Cause I know none of them are listening to this podcast. <laughs> I need my air horn. So it's just kind of neat. And I, I love that you're sharing the story, you know, like, cause those are, those are real connections, right? Cause like, I, that's something, you know, especially being isolated. I think a lot of people are craving that. So like just kind of as the last thing to share, cause I know I'm probably taking up your time and I, I promise you be 30 minutes and we're already over that. I love talking to you, George. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. So w- like for someone who's like listening to this, but maybe not connecting, right. What advice would you give them to start off? Like what advice would you give to, you know, to start building some of those connections in, in those virtual spaces? Mm-hmm. Well, each platform offers something different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Twitter, it it limits you to a certain number of characters. You know, Instagram is very much picture based. Facebook, you can kind of, it's kind of like the mix of two, right? You throw in pictures, videos quite easily with as much text as you want. So I'd say, you know, find the platform that kind of fits with you best and then just start connecting. Like the people that you follow, people that you, that, that you read, uh, you know, like for you, you for example, if, if I, I, you know, I love your work, so start diving into who you follow or, you know, and just start, right. start, start small, like, or, and talk to other people that are already connected. And so, you know, I've seen on the power of Twitter, like somebody will post out there, okay, I'm new to Twitter, um, you know, looking for some followers or people to follow. Right. Next thing you know, like I've seen just recently in a day, this person has a thousand followers, right? Yeah, um, and, oh, and, and people asking like, okay, who else should I follow? And so it, it just starts, just start small, take one step at a time. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I think another th- piece I want to say is, you know, we talked about being a lurker, right? And, and yeah. what that means is just, you know, you just kind of are a part of things, you start kind of maybe liking a few things here and there, but you're just kind of watching to see what, what people say and all that. And it really wasn't until I started contributing that I felt like I was a part of any community. So being part of Twitter chats and things like that. And, but what it was, was really having the confidence to, right. And, and really understanding that I have a voice. And so when I discovered that, that's what made the the biggest difference. So I think, you know, my advice would be everyone has a voice. Don't be afraid to share it. And, you know, obviously with, with what you share, you, you want to share with respect and, and all that, you know, treat other people the way you want to be treated. And, and, you know, I always say there's more than one way to say the same thing. So it's just when I started sharing, other people started to comment and, and follow. And, you know, I, we talked about this earlier, but be your authentic self. Whoever you are, bring that forward to whatever right. platform you have. And start sharing and and don't be afraid to say what is on your mind um, and to add on like all, all, the, all of these pieces that we teach our students right like if somebody's saying something add on to what they have to say agree um, and and push forward whatever thoughts that you have 
you know, there's teachers work so hard, but a lot of us, you know, we, if, if you don't have a classroom blog or whatever, a lot of us, all of our like great things that happen in our classroom, just stay in the classroom, mm -hmm. you know, take a quick picture and post a few words of, of what you're doing. And, you know, I am the teacher today because of a lot of other teachers that I followed and, and, you know, just seeing all the great things that they're doing, getting different ideas and we grow with each other. Right. And the more that I share, the more other people can go, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to try it in my classroom. And then somebody will see that they're doing it. And it's just, just that, that ripple effect. We all make each other better. So it's like that stronger together, better together um, attitude. And that, you know, I, I really embrace the teach better mindset in that, you know, um, today I'm going to be better than yesterday. And then tomorrow I'm going to be better than today. And, you know, one of my, uh, the tagline on my blog is working uh, together to better ourselves, each mm -hmm. other, and the world around us. And I really believe that because it's, I, I, if I just stayed in my own classroom and did, you know, and didn't look out to see what else other people were doing or, and didn't share, I, you know, I would not have grown to who I am today, right? So the more that we share, the more that mm -hmm. we can lean on each other and learn from each other, it just really, at the end of the day, we want to make students um, better, right? And so Absolutely. if we're better, then it obviously is going to make them better. Yeah, there, there's something, there's a couple of things I just want to build on what you said. The, um, th this idea, like, I remember when I first got on Twitter and started connecting and just thought it was the most amazing thing, right? And then I write a blog post mm -hmm. about, like, hey, you need to connect, blah, 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 right? And I did that probably 2010, 2011, right? And then two years later, I see someone posting, like, basically, like, oh, Twitter's the best. Here's how you connect, right? Yeah. And then a year later, somebody does that. And then a year later, and then you see people like, why are you posting that, blah, blah, blah? And the way that I always look at it is like, hey, look, I started in 2010. Mm -hmm. There was people two years prior that did that that aren't criticizing me, right? And there's people, you know, that did it two years later who might be criticizing someone that's starting their journey off. So like, where were you in 2007 when this started, right? Because I wasn't there. And I think part of it too is that, like you said, is that there are multiple ways that you can say the same thing. And I think it reaches different people and people are at different points of their journey and really honoring and respecting that is that I'm not saying like, like I used to kind of feel that if you're not kind of jumping in, you're, you're just cause you just don't want to get better. And I just, now I really believe that there could be different circumstances. There's different points in our career. There's different things that are happening in our lives. And that time that you jump in is, is the time for you. And that's, and just honoring that. And w this is the, the, the last thing I'll say is that I'm really big on when you enter any space and I'm talking virtual, I'm talking face to face that you make that place better. And we've all, like, if you've been in education, we've, we've all been in the toxic staff room and there's toxic staff rooms out there and they're virtual and they're in person. Right. Yeah. And the nice thing is I don't have to go there. Like I don't have to go there, nor do I have to pay attention to that. Right. And I can do that. And I, like, I think it's really good. Like when you, you build a really good community, it, there is challenge. There is like, not everything is like, Hey, everyone agrees with me on everything, but I ha I know I have support. And so, the reason I bring this up is because I have watched you go into spaces and make them better. And so I really appreciate it. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on that podcast today. So, um, I just, I think that you just model that I try to do my best to do that. I can't say I've been a hundred percent in my lifetime, but I do try. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you and I appreciate you taking time, uh, to be in the podcast. And when everyone moves to BC to teach there, it's because of this podcast. So that's we awesome. We think. need more teachers in BC. <laughs> There's a shortage here. Hey, well, thank Livia. Thanks so much for being here. And everyone, thanks for taking the time to listen. Make sure you connect with Livia. You can see her contact information in the, in the description down below. So Livia, thanks for having, or thanks thank for uh, taking the time to be with me today. I'm so honored and blessed to have spent this time with you, George. Thank you thank so you. much. I appreciate you. I hopefully get to see you in BC in person sometime soon. Yeah. Okay. Bye everybody. <laughs>